Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to follow up on uh, the senator from West Virginia and then also from South Dakota in regard to the baselines. Uh, I really feel like the, the 2012 baseline is arbitrary. Uh, it, you know, you've got this complicated formula to determine the targets that the states must meet. In Arkansas, uh, because we have a new coal power, plant, power plant that was online, not online until December 2012, it really doesn't accurately represent where Arkansas is at. Uh, we're going to be in a situation where we're number six or seven on the list. In reality, because of the, the formula discrepancy, really two or three. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bottom line is, you, you know, you talk about opportunities for states to cut, you know, emissions and all of this. And that's true, but the reality is the electricity bill for the average person in Arkansas, uh, people on fixed income, single moms, things like that, is going to increase significantly. So I guess, you know, what I would like for you to do is look at the 2012 baseline, mm -hmm. look at the catch-22 situations, you know, that, that you're putting states in, mm -hmm. like Arkansas, and it sounds like South Dakota's in the same situation. Uh, and again, I'd, I'd really like for you to commit to, to work uh, the targets out in that regard and make it such that at least, I, I disagree totally with the rule, but at least it could be fair. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Senator. Uh, we've had a number of discussions about the Arkansas situation in particular. Um, the 2012 issue has been brought up by a number of states. We actually, in our in our notice of data availability we put out this fall, we included information from uh, 2010 and 2011 so people could take a look at, at how that might make a difference to look at different years. So, so we're very open um, to, to, to hearing those concerns and to trying to, to work them through. Um. The other thing I'd like to talk about is reliability. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about cost and things. Are you familiar with Southwest Power Pool? Yes. Okay. Well, for those that, that aren't, that are listening, uh, uh, Southwest Power Pool is mandated by FERC to ensure reliable supplies of power, adequate transmission infrastructure, and competitive wholesale prices of electricity. I think you'd agree. They're, they're the folks that when you flip the switch, the electricity comes on. You know, and, and as a result of that, if they don't do a good job, if they don't uh, provide reliable power, then they pay fines and are held responsible uh, to the federal government. I think you'd also agree that they're nonpartisan. It's just an agency that's doing their best to make things work. They reviewed your mandates and produced a reliability impact assessment. Have you reviewed that? Uh, uh, not that one specifically, Senator, yeah, I, but I'm aware that they have done that. I, I really think you should. I think it's important. Uh, they found that, that significant new generating capacity not currently planned will be needed to replace the re retirements that EPA is predicting about uh, 9,000 megawatts in our region alone by 2020. Significant new transmission infrastructure will be needed. Uh, it currently takes up to eight and a half years to study, plan, and conduct I'm sorry, construct transmission uh, and cost up to $2.3 million per, per mile of new transmission. Uh, so the scenario that they're coming up is such that it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to do this as you're proposing without, uh, you know, uh, it, it affecting reliability. Mm -hmm. So they've really come up with four things that they've asked you to do, and, and I think they're very, very reasonable. First, they recommend a series of technical conferences jointly sponsored by the EPA and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission focusing on the impacts on regional markets and power system reliability. And I guess, you know, my question to you is, would you agree to do that? That to me is a, you know, is a very common sense approach to, to actually making sure We've heard a lot of talk today about we need to do something. Well, mm -hmm. we need to do the right thing. Right. Uh, and those so would you commit to, to actually doing that and, and getting the groups together and talking about the unintended consequences that we might see? Yeah, actually, those technical conferences are already scheduled, Senator. The first one's going to happen next week, and then there are um, uh, several more around the country. Very good. Second, they recommend a detailed, comprehensive, and independent study of the North American bulk power system 
conducted by the North American Electric Reliability Corporation before EPA adopts its final rules? And again, would you consider uh, going forward with getting a good study, a good independent study, uh, to address the potential unintended consequences uh, that uh, Southwest Power Pool and I think uh, you know several of the other independent systems are concerned about. Well, I believe that NERC is already um, doing that kind of work and has put some information out. Um, I, I want to note that that until the states um, decide what it is that they intend to do by way of compliance, um, it, it's it's really not very possible to do a real reliability study. Yeah. But what's what's um, very good about the conversations that are happening and the work that SPP and others are doing is that they're doing exactly what you just described their, their job to be, which is thinking ahead, looking ahead, planning, thinking about contingencies, thinking about how things might roll out, what, whatever the, the incoming factors are, whether it's an EPA rule, whether it's um, uh, anticipated um, uh, weather events that could, it could affect the, the power um, system, whether it's uh, shifts in, um, in, in use of fuels based on anticipated prices. And so, so those kinds of conversations are exactly what should be happening and what is happening. The study that that uh, or the the study that Southwest Power Pool coming up with the 9,000 megawatts and the uh, again the, the difficulty in constructing things mm -hmm. right and I would add also just the difficulty in getting easements and all of the uh, the hassle that goes with that uh, uh, one of their recommendations is to extend the compliance schedule uh, by five years. Right. We, we, we've heard that, not just from them, but from others. We've also heard um, concerns, as I mentioned earlier, about the interim compliance date of 2020. That, that is causing a lot of anxiety, um, less than the, than the is ultimate it compliance enough state. causing anxiety that you're going to do something We're looking about. very, very closely at it, <laughs> Senator. Okay. And then the last thing that they recommend is that you adopt a reliability safety valve uh, recommended by the independent system operators and regional transmission organizations. Right, right. That's that's um, uh, 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 an idea that several people and organizations have raised. Again, that's another thing that we're looking very, very closely at. Well, again, I'm, I'm very much opposed to the rule, but, but uh, I, I really do think that you need to really look at the reliability and, and mm -hmm. what is the impact it's going to have. And also, the uh, significant impact, I know that you mentioned that uh, states will have the ability to reduce their, their uh, uh, footprint uh, mm -hmm. and things, and yet the reality is at the end of the day, uh, lots of people are going to have significantly increased utility bills uh, as a result of the regulation, with, I think, uh, uh, pretty good data to show that uh, it's, it's all pain and very limited gain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.